If you've ever managed to get your manuscript published by a traditional publisher, you've probably faced the harsh reality that many publishers aren't interested in editing your novel and don't plan on it anytime soon. So how do you get your book reader ready? Today on The Writer's Journey, we're taking a chapter from our very own Scott Moon's book, and we're going to take it straight through the editing process from developmental line and copy to demonstrate once and for all that editing is not dead. So not dead, uh, not dead at all. <laughs> Working my ass off. Definitely not dead. <laughs> so ladies, thanks for joining us on the show today. It's good times. Hey, Mr. Lauren. Cases. Hi. Hi. Now, Part of where this is coming from is I really need your ladies' help because I've been getting a bunch of um, calls and messages from new editors or people wanting to get into the editing field saying, how do I do it and where can I find information on how to get started? So I thought if we just took something small and like went through the process from start to finish, that it would give people an idea of what they're looking at when they're right. editing a manuscript. Yeah. Other thing was, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, and um, knowing what you may or may not have a knack for. Yes. Yeah. It's true. Not all editors are good at all things. In fact, most editors are not good at all things. And anybody that tells you, oh, yeah, I can do this, 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 and that, that, that may be true, but the odds are very good that they're better at something than, than they are at something else. Right. Right. Um, and a, a collaboration can help bring out everyone's strong suits and make the most of it for this particular book. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the other thing is Kevin J. Anderson on Facebook last week, he shared an interesting blog post uh, from withoutbullshit.com that I thought I would share it with you. It's why your publisher won't edit your manuscript and what to do about it. And, um, you know, despite the, the name of the source, uh, Kevin was saying, this is exactly true. This is what my publishers are looking for me. They're looking for a novel that's ready to go right now. They're not, they're not looking to edit it at all. And that's why he and his wife, Rebecca, take so much time pouring over every single word to make it ready. Um, so uh, this article, just real quick, uh, the author says he's written or edited more than 25 books published by traditional or hybrid publishers. I know what your publisher is looking for and what they will and won't do for you. So here's some straight talk. Publishers in 2021 won't generally edit your book. They're looking for a publishable, publishable manuscript. Even if your hybrid publisher offers developmental editing, you're unlikely to get much handholding. Uh, and as he goes through the blog post, he talks about the kind of editing he's gotten. He's gotten uh, three comments on a manuscript, like in the entire manuscript, and there's something like, add more international examples. Cut 10,000 words. Just randomly, not going to tell you which ones I thought were bad. Just cut 10,000 of them. Just cut 10,000. <laughs> add something about the particular issues that women face. So in a book of 60 to 70,000 words, he got three comments from his editors. And this is the information he got back. Yeah, so not entire. I like. What do you even do with that? Cut ten thousand words. Where could you like in the middle, at the end? Just, you know, two thousand here, three thousand there. But, yeah. yeah, not very constructive. Very right. So you want that kind of helpful advice, that feedback that you can take and use. You want that outsider information. So where do you go to get it? Oh, and real quick, Ken Britz is asking, when they say publisher, so on this article, do they mean small press or big five? I'm thinking more big five because um, the the smaller presses, the like the indie run um, publishers like Athon, uh, me and Lauren know firsthand, we are digging in there deep and we are definitely leaving more than just three comments. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Well, Lauren said that the article said traditional and hybrid. Hmm. True. So that, that's probably who they mean. Yeah. And this this uh, website seems to be related to Hatchet. So, um, but yeah. I almost got us in trouble with the FCC. What? Ah! <laughs> well, let's not do that. <laughs> yeah, gut check. All right. Anyway, so we have Scott Moon. We've got one of the chapters from his book. One of his books. One of his books. He's a prolific author and you should buy a bunch of his books so he can retire. Yes. And do so, you want me to read the original? Before yes. 
Okay. Yes. So we'll we'll read through this chapter for you guys. Kayleen's going to read it because she's awesome with it. And then we'll go through the developing developmental comments, the sorts of things that you can expect from uh, an indie, a freelance editor who's working with you on developmental. And then we'll, Ellen and I will do, particularly Ellen, we'll do some line and copy editing right here live in front of you. All right. So we have chapter five out of this. I don't even know what book this is, but it's chapter five. And here is what I initially worked with because um, I did. I went through and did a dev, which anyway, I'm just gonna read it. Laura controlled her breathing. Two aliens, that's all she could call them right now because they were so outside anything she understood, ignored her as they argued. In with the good air, hold it out with the bad air, Laura murmured, then laughed maniacally. Her leg was messed up, barely under conscious control. Her arms worked fine, however, so she clawed her way back backward. Stop! The strange alien suspect growled, or the strange giant suspect growled. Laura barely recognized the word as English, but she got the point. You stop yourself, freak! She twisted under her stomach and low crawled like her life depended on it. Each grab and pull the pavement tore skin from her hands. The asphalt carved huge grooves in the patent leather gun belt. The second giant, every bit of eight feet tall in his armor, stomped ahead of him to the patrol car and blocked Laura's progress. Desperate, unable to think of anything but escape, Laura dragged herself toward the opening of an alley and forced herself to stand. The concrete had that behind a restaurant greasy feel and smelled like piss, body odor, and old beer cans. The euphoria she'd felt shortly after being bitten was gone, or more accurately, it receded whenever she moved. As long as she waited for her killers, everything about her world was cold and blissful. She didn't want an icy palace of serenity. She wanted the burning fire of murderous revenge. Pain exploded through her leg as she took a step. Grinding her teeth, she took three more steps. What she accomplished next wasn't exactly running, but herky-jerky ambulation in the right direction. Hellish pain pushed co coherent thought from her mind and opened the door for hallucinations. The world was ice. Her brain was cold, her soul frozen like it had never known heat. Words she couldn't understand whispered harshly in her brain. Someone or something was telling her to stop, surrender to the cold, and embrace the warmth of obedience. Screw that, she sobbed cursed, every muscle in her body cramped, nearly undoing her resolve. She put one palm on the wall for balance, breathing shallowly and forcing herself to relax. There was no way she could get up if she fell. Her fingers dragged across chips in the paint and she slid her way forward. No, human, I said stop! The first giant shouted as he chased Laura into the shadows between buildings. Not today, champ. You want some of this, you come and get it. Pain distorted her words and she twisted her neck to look over her shoulder. Silhouetted by the mouth of the alleyway, one of the armored giants pulled a pack from his back and opened it. She didn't see what happened next, but didn't like what her gut was telling her. The figure had, had the manner of a canine handler about to release a dog. Shwak, shwak, he shouted. If she had time to think, and maybe she understood this subconsciously, she would have thought of a drone operator unpacking a remote-controlled flying machine. Hating the way her pain-filled voice sounded, she keyed her portable radio, radio mic and shouted for help. Put us out in trouble. We're under attack. Multiple suspects. Armed and dangerous. That was when she reached the dead end. A ten-foot-tall chain-link fence about a foot away from an even higher brick wall. On a good day, she thought she could have parkered her way up it. Maybe grabbed the bottom of the barred, boarded-up window ledge. She put her back onto the chain-link then checked the magazine and her pistol. Two rounds left. These needed to count. The nine millimeter rounds had to hit some part of her attacker that dropped him instantly. Three winged creatures, fleshy cyborgs trailing ominous tendrils behind them as they arced forward, swept into the alley. Shooting at the small flying things seemed pointless, so she aimed at the man launching them and fired twice. Both rounds struck. The giant staggered, Others rushed past the alien she'd injured, holstering her weapon. She considered fighting hand-to-hand. -hand. As desperate measures went, it was lame. 
The fence and the window were a better option. Reaching safety in that direction seemed as likely as flying to the moon, but failing to take action was unacceptable. She dug her fingers into the chain link, stabbed her toes, the toes of her boots into the diamond-shaped gaps that were slightly too small to stand in. Up and up she went. The aliens shouted strange words that hurt her ears and made her bones cold. A waffling non-sound battered her ears. It was like driving with one window rolled down, annoying, but nowhere near disabling. One hand found the windowsill. She grabbed with the other, knowing two things. She wasn't strong enough right now to pull herself up with all her gear on, and if she missed the second grab, she would fall 15 feet onto her back, and then be murdered by giant, blood-smeared alien commandos. Shit, and double shit. Come down, human. You survived the bite. You may bite others and live. Weeping with desperation, anger, and frustration, she found herself two-thirds of the way through the window. Her face hit the floor of the dark room where she fell inside. Do not forsake the gift. The strongest among you may survive, may serve us for a thousand years. Knowing it was a mistake, but too tired to care, Chicago police officer Laura Osag, Osag, Osag? looked down on her pursuers. Come to me, human, the alien shock trooper said. Human blood had been smeared across his face. I will show you how to feed on the blood power of this planet. Why don't you climb up here and I'll show you how to go to hell, she asked and presented both of her middle fingers. The alien commando leader smiled. She realized her mistake a second too late. The flying bio drone slammed into her, launching her back into the abandoned apartment. Darkness surrounded her. Winged techno serpents held her to the ground. Heavy footsteps shook the stairs. The door flew inward and she was surrounded by armored giants. One who was less bloody than the others dragged her away from the airborne drone creatures that had been holding her. He cursed in his strange, painful language. Others argued with him. She didn't see what happened at rough, as rough hands dragged her this way and that in the semi-darkness. All she wanted was to make it to the window and see the lights of her city one last time. The commotion stopped. The leader of the alien troopers squatted over her. I have decided. You will feed. You will serve us. Maybe I spare more of your race if you comply. If you do my bidding. If you help me secure the city and make the occupation peaceful. No, she groaned. He tilted his head. Do you not love your people? Do you not wish to protect them? Why don't you ask a fair question, asshole? She grumbled. You are more interesting than the others. But do not question too many things. The virus will keep all good servants alive, even if it much must change you, inside and out. Unseen! So that's what we're working with. Ooh. Nice. So this is from Scott Moon's uh, They Came for Blood series, following the, the Osage sim siblings, as the there's an alien invasion of basically alien vampires Actually, multiple alien races coming to take over the world. Very good. All right. So I tore this one a good one. Um, mm. uh, mostly in the beginning of the chapter. Um, and I've I've not personally read this. So um, I'm just going off of what this chapter is. Some information, you know, would have been established, you know, in, in the in the before chapters. But this by itself is painting kind of like its own its own scene obviously so that's that's where a lot of my shifts and comments are coming from to strengthen to strengthen that um can't we make it bigger can I not? Yeah. lots bigger whoa oh bigger yeah gotcha. sorry i thought you said i know so kayleen when you're doing a developmental edit and you're looking at a chapter we've got chapter five right here uh what what's the first thing you're looking for as a developmental editor like the structure of the chapter, what kind so, of, what are you looking for to fix? So for me, I don't know what I need to fix until I read it. So the first thing I did was read it just like I just read it. Um, how are, you know, individual sentences building on top of each other? Is the, the imagery being painted from those sentences? Does it make sense? Um, 
Is the tension falling anywhere? Can deleting a sentence help that? Can shifting something help that? Um, so for example, that opening, um, I read that opening about five different times because there was this ambiguousness to what was going on. You know, we know that she's in pain, there's aliens and she's trying to get away, but not until about halfway, you know, down do we, do we know that it's, oh, she's been bitten and all this stuff. So I brought up right out of the gate, Laura's leg was messed up barely under conscious control. Her arms worked fine, however, so she clawed her way backward. Now we instantly have that image of what her desperation is and where she's at, because that is like the beginning source of this chapter. Laura controlled her breathing. And then I moved up that dialogue because where it was, um, and I have it in the comments, it was breaking up the urgency of the aliens noticing her. So that's where part of that tension kind of like fell for me just a little bit um, because, you know, she's controlling her breathing. There's aliens. She laughs maniacally and then suddenly they're just like, stop. It's like, but they were ignoring her. So I just wanted to strengthen that, um, that sensation of urgency. So in with the good air, hold it out with the bad air, she murmured. The two aliens, that's all she could call them right now because they were so outside anything she understood ignored her as they argued. She laughed maniacally, twisted onto her stomach and low crawled like her life depended on it. Stop, the strange su giant suspect growled. So now her movement, her laughing maniacally is what's pushing their suddenly, they're not ignoring her anymore. They, they hear her laugh, they see her twist and trying to crawl away. Um, so I see what you're doing in the developmental edit, edit is you're yeah. reading it as the reader trying to picture what's going on and then deleting sentences that are getting in the way and then adding in sentences or, re or putting restructuring, in comments, yeah. restructuring it to make it more clear for the reader. Yeah. And so then this... the, the author can take that information, they can, they can take it or leave it, or maybe it, it gives them a new idea of what they would like to do instead. Yeah. So like with, with the opening purely, it's just reordering the information that's being delivered. Mm -hmm. to paint the picture in just a more cohesive means. So I didn't change anything as far as what's happening. I didn't change anything as far as, um, you know, what she's going through. I just changed the order of how that's presented mm -hmm. so that we see her in this danger and why, you know, we're getting a sense for her mental state. And then we see what's around her that's causing this. You know, and then that I love the laughing maniacally because it's just like they're arguing. She's bleeding out on the ground. You know, it's just God, oh, this is going on. And then I loved that sentence of she twisted onto her stomach and low crawled like her life depended on it. I wanted to bring that up a lot sooner. If you can hear my bird, I'm sorry. He's right now. Um, I wanted to bring that up sooner and get her in motion faster because it's not until after they say stop that she's suddenly moving. So I wanted to get that right out of the gate that she is moving. She's trying to get away and now they're pursuing her. So that's, that's that opening bit. Um, and then going down a little to towards the bottom of that first page, um, the desperate, unable to think of anything but escape, Laura dragged herself toward the opening of the alley. So I inserted Laura change direction and hmm. because the giant, is suddenly in front of her, um, but she doesn't change direction. She just keeps, so was she going towards the alley the whole time? You know, so with with that giant coming in front of her to block her, it's like, oh shit, she needs to, that path is, is no longer available. So now we're going to the alley. So it's just, it's super tiny addition to up the tension of her own predicament if that makes sense. <laughs> um, and then the euphoria she'd felt. Sure. Oh, and then also I deleted um, stomped ahead of him. I just, I deleted the of, of him because um, we don't necessarily need to know that the one alien got in front of the other alien. All we need to really know is that he's trying to stop Laura. Um, Where, I'm sorry, I'm not seeing it. No, it's go up a little. Up, up, up. Oh, whoa, where'd it go? Um, well, too far. Nope. It's just right at the bottom of page one. 
I just so, about on page one. Well, maybe maybe not when it's at one hundred and eighty percent. No, it it's it's you way too far down. <laughs> um, yeah, let me open. I have it on here. Right here. Yeah. So yeah, added to amplify the image of this alien in front of her. Without something like this, it's like the alley is where she was headed all along. So the alien blocking her path is kind of fruitless. It's like, why do we need to know that if she was already headed to the alley? Because he goes in front of the patrol car. So that's the only reason why I added that. And then when we go down to the next paragraph, the euphoria she'd felt after being bitten was gone. Or more accurately, it needed, it receded whenever she moved. So that next part that I have highlighted, um, I tweaked it just a bit because... Um, how did I say? Strengthening the knowledge of if she doesn't move, it doesn't hurt. But she says, screw that. That's a, that's at least how I kind of understood it is if she's not moving, she's not in horrendous amounts of pain. But it was just a little confusing that that's what the meaning was. So, And then I added at the very end there, she didn't want an ice palace of serenity. She wanted the burning fire of murderous rage. So she made herself move. And the reason why I added so she made herself move is because on the next page, there um, was a line, pain exploded through her leg as she took a step. I deleted the as part of that sentence and mm. put her in motion. So that's why. That's the only reason. Mm -hmm. um, and then in here, um, with I, I changed how she's going through the alleyway to reaffirm and strengthen that she she's moving faster than she probably should be and either the captors are having trouble catching up to her or she's moving fast enough to think that maybe she's moving fast enough to get away so with one palm on the wall for balance it was all she could do to stay upright in her hobbled dash is what i added breathing mm -hmm. shallowly and forcing herself to relax so adding that reinforces that she's still moving. She's still trying to get away. And because it's kind of like this slow down moment where we're getting into her head with, with what's going on. So it's just a slight reaffirming of that. And then from here, there was just a couple little spots um, where um, the um, right here, maybe grabbed the bottom of the boarded up window. Is that the only window in the alleyway? Because it sounds like it's the only window. And just after that, she's falling through that window. So if it's boarded up, how is she falling through that? Um, so that was that was a question. And then um, after she shoots off her gun, others rushed past the alien. Others what? Other giant aliens or other winged cyborgs? So that was just a specific as far as what is this other that is rushing towards her. So we just need that extra bit of visual so that, you know, is it more giant beasts or are they more flying cyborgs? And that was pretty much um good catch. The 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 biggest chunk as far as dev goes, um clarity of information, you know, the the scenery that you're painting doesn't make sense. Like with that boarded window, she can't get through it if it's boarded. Um, if there's multiple windows, then okay, but it sounds like that's the only window there. So it can't be boarded if she's going to just go up and then flop through it. Um, but yeah, and then the only other part, which I forgot to add, um, I realized it after I was reading, was when she's in, when she flops into this, into the room, um, maybe paint that darkness right away. Like, if that makes sense. I probably, I needed to mark it, but yeah. Um, Let's see, come down, knowing it was a mistake, and then she's put in darkness because of the um, the cyborg thingies. But um, I might be okay. Anyway, but yeah, that's my dev. I tried really hard not to line. I tried to only do dev stuff, so <laughs> that, was, that was the gist of it. That was awesome. Yeah, so you're really focusing on clarity and pacing and making sure the story is coming across like the author intends to the yeah. reader. Which, as, as an author, I can tell you is really hard to do when you are the writer because it all makes sense in your head. You can see it very clearly. Um, but, but you had a great sense of the continuity and what order things needed to be going in. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, Ellen, if you are an author, how can you tell if your book needs a developmental edit or not? Uh, because most of our clients do not ask for a developmental edit. Um, that's not most of the work that we do um, or what they're looking for. But how can you tell if that is what you need? Um, this is going to sound really terrible. Um, well, OK, instead of instead of going that direction, I'll go this direction. If. Uh, if you have if you're having problems making scenes come together, if you can't figure out quite how to get from, you know, the spaceship to the castle or whatever you're doing, then you might need a developmental edit, especially if you have more than one place where you're having a hard time putting scenes together or bringing the story threads together, mm. making the arc go where you want it to go. Yeah. Yeah, so if the, the plot's not fully coming together, then that could be a time when you need a developmental editor as a, a collaborator. Um, and then Kayleen, what what are your clients looking for when they ask you to do a developmental edit? Like, what do they want from you? So the most most common ones are, um, are my characters coming across, you know, in a certain way. So it's like, I, I really want this girl to be strong, but she's terrified. Is that coming across or does she just bitchy you know um is is certain um uh gosh just all my words died huh. uh, um like the the plot points of the story are they are they happening at a good time like yeah. does it make sense that it happens now is there is there anything that needs to happen before or after Do, am i doing too much and sometimes um, honestly, a lot of the time they're just like, hey, I have this manuscript. It's this genre. What do you charge? And I go, well, let me get it. If it's especially if it's a new if it's a new client, um, send me pages 30 to 32, whatever the closest beginning of a chapter is to those pages and send me those two pages. And then I'm going to do a sample edit for you because it's each manuscript, even for the same client can be vastly different um so on sometimes like i've i've done some manuscripts like multiple manuscripts from one person where one didn't need as much but the other one did um and so for for new clients i want to show you what my editing will do for your words it's it's the easiest way for me to do that um and i try to get a big enough chunk you know at least like a thousand to twelve hundred words um, so that like in the, in the case of the Scott Moon one, if there are areas where, Hey, things are getting muddled here, but if we reorder how it's being presented, then it'll make a lot more sense. And that's the dev part of it. And, you know, and I point that all out and I'm like, so I'm seeing this just in this little excerpt from the 1200. You're, I'm probably going to need to be doing a lot more of that. Um, but yeah if that made any sense at all. <laughs> oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. I've had clients reach out to me and they're asking about uh, pacing. They've got a sense that their, their storyline is lagging in the middle. Maybe they've got a whole lot of meetings. They've got a whole lot of discussions and we need to kind of pull some of those out and get more action in and they need some ideas. And I know Kayleen, I've reached out to you on a number of occasions. We've had a, just a phone call or a video chat because I had a plot problem that I could not untangle myself, but just being able to have you to bounce ideas off of. So a developmental edit or a uh, story coach could be something you need if you're just kind of stuck in your plot or you just have a sense that it is either confusing on the one hand or it's lagging and, and there's not enough action. That actually it reminds me. So so one, one thing that I, I recently did, so I was on book three of this particular client's story and book two had hit a couple of snags, but we, you know, I went through and I was like, hey, if we twist this a little, add something here, you know, that'll get nice and, and cinched up and I'll be stronger. I get to book three, I get to chapter four, and I am worried. I am very worried. Characters no longer have any motivation. They don't have any, like, there's no tension for anything that they're doing. Um, each chapter is a completely different scene, opening up a completely different, you know, avenue for story. So then I stop edit. I, I stop line. I stop doing line edits. And I'm going through just reading, trying to figure out what the heck is going on. I stop completely, message said author. And I'm like, I am can't edit this 
it, it is not ready to be edited. Um, at least not as far as line edits and then maybe a couple, hey, shift that, add this type of developmental. I'm like, this needs to be completely taken apart and put back together. This is not uh, a story yet. This yeah, is so, around and bitching. <laughs> yeah, so I I literally stopped all edits and did a what I call a reverse outline. So I remade the outline and then rethought about the character motivations, rethought about like where this story is really headed and had to refind the purpose for that book. And that actually ended up having to go back into book two and book one because where book three sat was impacting stuff that needed to happen, especially in book two, for it to make sense in book three. Hmm. And so I did a write up um, and I'm mentioning this because there was a question in chat um, for developmentals is there from Ken Britz, is there an editorial write up that comes with the developmental edit that depends on the editor? It depends on the developmental edit. Yeah. So this one required a write up. So, I mean, it was like a 15, 20 page document where I went through and not necessarily chapter by chapter, but, um, you know, overall, this is what's happening. This is progressing. This is where I can see you want it to end. But these characters don't make sense. This guy abs has absolutely no purpose being in the story anymore. And he's the main character. <laughs> like He had zero purpose being in the story. Um, you know, she, it just didn't make any sense. So then I went through, I reordered all of the chapters. I recommended a bunch of additions. I recommended, you know, some deletions. And then he went through and dug through all that. And I just got that back last week and I'm going through it and it is so much better. Yay. Oh my God, it's so much better. <laughs> Book three is a lot stronger. Um, those things that he wanted to include now make sense because of other stuff is strengthening it and giving it purpose. So um, sometimes the developmental means ripping your shit apart and putting it back together. Yeah. Sometimes it means I'm doing line edits and hey, chapter three would do a lot better if you put it after chapter seven. It's fine otherwise, mm -hmm. but let's just flip them. So, um, and that can be hard if you wind up with an editor who says they're good at that, but they're not. <laughs> like they're, they're more like doing copy, but you want to, you want information on character development and stuff, but they're not really versed in it. So and that's um, why I have new development. Yeah. So if you, if you do find yourself in a situation where um, you haven't asked for developmental, um, take what they're saying with a grain of salt, really think, does this help my characters? Does this help my plot? Does it confuse my plot? Do I even want this? Because at the end of the day, it's your story and your words. And as far as me goes, being a developmental line editor, my whole goal is to make your words stronger, to make your characters um, either, if you want that guy to be hated on the ends of the earth, I'm gonna help you do it, man. If you want this, you know, the, the upbeat, uh protagonist right yeah um i'm gonna help with that but anyway so on to the line <laughs> well no you brought up some really great points right there so if he had hired you for a copy edit which is farther down the editing stage than yeah. developmental then all those chapters that honestly you're saying should have come out or would never have they would have been copy edited and they shouldn't be in the book or chapters that need to be in the book would it wouldn't be there at all? Yeah, yeah basically. Um, and this is a good time to make the point that developmental comes first. Don't yes. go get a line or a copy edit or a proofread or anything else, and then go back for a developmental edit. Developmental yeah. edits come first. Yeah, because when I'm when I'm doing just dev, like what I did with Scott, like there's there's definitely line stuff that I would have done, but like that wasn't my focus. My focus was order of information, how it's impacting the tension, and does it make sense? Yeah. And I think Ellen, we've had we've edited books before where we were hired to do a line and a copy, and then by the end of the book, you know, it's really clear that some of these chapters were going to be deleted or rewritten, and all of that work that you put in is yeah. now gone. And that's yeah. oh, that's hard too. Okay, yeah, yeah. so before you hire an editor to to do work that you're going to pay for, uh, make sure that the book is ready to go for that edit. Yeah. 
I mean, I know it's, 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 it can be hard to remember because, you know, if it's not your thing, it's not your thing, but you do orders, you do edits in a specific order because otherwise it's just stupid. Otherwise you're just wasting money. Hey, Rhett, otherwise you're wasting money. You're wasting your time. Um, you're breaking your heart. You're losing characters. You're adding characters, whatever you're doing. Yeah. You start with developmental. But yeah. Write the story before you fix the dialogue. So if you're going to think about it, and this is probably going to hurt Ellen, if you're going to think about it like a house, <laughs> you okay. want your foundation and your and your inner structure nice and solid and good with all concrete poured properly and boards not sticking out. You want it all solid before you start putting in the sheetrock and the muscle. Anyway. <laughs> No, it's not, Rhett. Stop trying to cause trouble. Rhett says editing is dead. Says he's Rhett, the editor. <laughs> the yeah. the co-founder of Athon Books. Author okay. and editor extraordinary. Yes. All right, we ready to... Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So now that we have gone through... Thank you, Kim. We've, um, we've made the overall structure of the chapter stronger. Now we can go in and we can look at that line by line. We can look at... is. Um, and and make those sentences of themselves stronger. So that's that's the next piece to the puzzle. So you have you have a strong structure. Now you're going to make sure is everything straight, um, good paint color. <laughs> I need to stop doing. Hey guys, here we go. Okay. So we're gonna first thing we're gonna do we're Turn on the track changes. Yes. All right, chapter five. Laura's leg was messed up, barely under conscious control. Um, that's a little clunky, but yeah. I'm gonna let it go for now because nothing better immediately occurs to me. I might come back and chop it up, but no. Yeah, so my one thing with that go. sentence was um what is barely under conscious control? Like we know that was the part that yeah, it's, it's clunky. Yeah. So let's try, it. we'll just take it out. Um, however, I, I have a really, really, really passionate hate relationship with the word, however. <laughs> Her arms worked fine. There was too many commas there anyway. Her arms worked fine. How about... But her arms worked. But she clawed her way backward. All right, now. Goodbye! <laughs> <laughs> We knew that was going to happen. No right? breathing. A whole sentence about breathing, guys. Yep. Okay. She murmured. She murmured uh, like, a mantra. like a mantra. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, it's more interesting. It flows better. Laura controlled her breathing. Okay, great. What, what does that have to do with anything, you know? So now that opening becomes Laura's leg was messed up. But her arms worked, so she clawed her way backward. In with the good air, hold it. Out with the bad air, she murmured like a mantra. It's just mm, right there. It shows that she's controlling the breathing without telling us. Yes. Right. Okay, the two aliens, that's all she could call them right now because they were so outside anything she understood. What does now have to do with it? ignored her as they argued um are they ignoring her because i had the impression that they maybe well of course they didn't know that they didn't know she was there see that was the other thing and, and one reason why i twisted it the way i did was because it some could have been happening in chapter four so we already have placement of characters mm -hmm. and what's going on right. so this could be fine because she could have, she was a bitten, she's on the ground, they know she's there, but they're ignoring her, arguing about what to do. So that's... Ignored her as they argued isn't... Okay. But like, I mean, it could it could also be like, the two aliens are, two aliens argued. That's all she could call them because they were so outside anything she stood, understood. Um, no, I mean, I've, I've got... I've got the germ of a sentence in my head. You guys will have to forgive me. I was on the road all day yesterday and That's fine. my brain is barely functioning. This is life. This is us. Argued. Yeah, I like that better. Just make it more concise. <laughs> I'm 
so. No, yes, no. Uh, no, no, it's not you. It's Ken in the chat. Oh, Ken, stop it. Oh, no. <laughs> or forgetting for the moment. What did you do, Ken? I will kill you. Oh, I'm not allowed to say no, that. because I have that in the manuscript um, that I'm one of the manuscripts I'm editing right now. She, the, the character speaks, and then instead of she said, it's she ejaculated. Please Ken, do not geez, have Ken. characters ejaculate their words. That's just end and all can we just agree that's the worst dialogue tag ever it, it didn't um, used to be zane gray used it and it worked although even as a child i thought it was kind of maybe that should it be a might have worked in the 1500s for shakespeare yeah we don't ejaculate our words anymore <laughs> seeming to for seeming to forget she was there yeah seeming to so part of the issue is the next line is she laughed maniacally, twisted onto her stomach and low crawled. And we're like, why is she laughing? So Ellen is making the situation a little bit funnier. Uh, I think. Well, maybe, maybe not. So hopefully when the reader gets to the line, she laughed maniacally. The reader's like, yeah, yeah, makes sense. So we've got the two aliens, that's all she could call them, because they were so outside anything she understood, argued, seeming to forget her presence. She, I like that a lot better. Or that, yeah, just take out the laugh maniacally and then the confusion's gone. I do, the, the one thing I do like about her crawling away unseen is it kind of reminds me of playing hide and go seek as a kid, you know, and you know, and the seeker is nearby and they haven't found you yet. And you're like, Oh, this is hilarious. They can't see me. And I think Scott might've been kind of going for that maybe, but. Well, remember I, I moved um, the twisting stomach. onto her stomach with her laughing. Because before it was in two separate places. Okay. Um, so I was before going into line, just consciously, exactly as you're saying, putting those two together. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, for me, it was strengthening a the ridiculousness of her situation. She's prone on the ground. She can't hardly move her legs, and there's giant aliens arguing over her. True. And it's just she twists on her stomach and unaccountably laughed, low crawling like her life depended on it. And oh, laughing like is absurdity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Let's leave that and come back to it. We can revisit that. Sure. A strange giant suspect growled. Uh, oh my God. Every time I, it, I, it I, I fumbled over that. Okay. See, so okay. So part of it, part of it suspect because she's a cop, but. Right. No, I get that. I got, yeah. I, I got that. But at the same time, I don't know. Well, suspect it's, someone you've got under arrest, right? It, well, no, yeah, suspect is a person you think did something. Yeah. Whether you've arrested him or not. Okay. But I don't I, think she would be thinking of him as a suspect it, in that moment. Exactly. That's part okay. of my thing is, like, she might be a cop. They probably were. But she is now the one in danger. And We'll start by going like this. Stop, exclamation point, strange giant suspect. No. Strange giant growled. I was just gonna say, yeah, yeah. just delete suspect. Federal voice of the giant. Hang on, no, I'm, I'm having, I'm, I'm giving birth to a sentence. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Ken's trolling Ellen while she's trying to focus. Stop it, Ken. <laughs> oh, no, I lost it. It's just gone. The right, she tried to sleep, huh? Okay. So we've got, she twisted under her stomach and unaccountably laughed, low crawling like her life depended on it. Stop, the guttural voice of the giant made her shiver. Oh, I like that. Thank you. Whoops. Sorry. Well, Everyone screenshot that. 
Well, I barely recognized the word as English, but she got the point. Um, okay. Okay, okay. This is just too much going on in front of a retort, you know? Mm. See what I'm saying? Yeah, retorts should be kind of quick to the point. Yeah, they, not that she barely recognized the word as English, but she got the point. And then she's she's directly saying exactly what. So she so, made, but, 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 she recognized but, it enough that it wasn't barely. Okay, but check it out. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. Just delete it all. But yeah. Because now, because with what Ellen added, now we know it, it's a guttural voice. It's something that's you know hitting her down to her core because it makes her shiver. But she knows what it is because she responds to it. Yeah. And just add a tag so it's really clear to the reader who's who's talking. Perfecto. Each. One here trying to make that. I'm trying really hard not to have you lose your, but we're in this, in that grabbing at the pavement, trying to make that, that grasping and, and yeah. each painful movement across the pavement tore more skin from her hands. Okay. How does she know the asphalt is carving huge grooves in her patent leather gun belt? I mean, I suppose it depends how close, like, is that, um, how, how often does it, does it go from close <laughs> third to omnipotent? I, yeah, I was wondering how, is it needed for the story, that sentence? Um, Ellen's replacing it with her patent leather gun belt kept catching on the rough ground. That adds a little bit of tension because if it's catching, that's slowing her down. Yeah. That's important for the story. And also um, resisting the urge to, to add onto that. So like, so it's like they look down, they reach, you know, we, we don't need all of that. Cause in our, in our minds, we can paint that ourselves is, Okay, the second giant, every bit of eight feet tall in his armor, stomped around. Okay, and blocked her escape. There we go. Yeah. So that makes it really clear that she's trying to get to the patrol car to get away, which I didn't even realize until now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. You're welcome. <laughs> Desperate, unable to think of anything. Okay, but since I just used escape, escape we have to yeah. like, take this one out. Desperate, unable to just, think of anything. Can you just take that whole thing out? Desperate, Laura, change direction. Yeah. Desperate, Laura, change direction. There you go. Desperate, Lee. Mm. Desperately, Laura changed direction and dragged herself toward the opening of an alley. Wait, Ellen, we can have adverbs in a novel? Yeah, you what? can. <laughs> the occasional adverb is not going to do you any harm. It's like the occasional, you know, shot of tequila. <laughs> Particularly when you're replacing, like, a, a phrase, a bunch of words with a little L-Y. Let's do it. Just do it. Okay, change direction. She can't, she's crawling on her stomach. How drastically could she change her direct direction? So I'm going to take change direction toward the opening of an alley. Wait, isn't she? Wait, okay. Drag herself toward the alley. of, you can always delete, almost. It does really. An alley. Toward an alley. Wait, see these these two things don't connect very well. Yeah. Even yeah. We need some kind of pause there, you know, I some herself toward a wall. 
and willed herself to stand. Mm. How's that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because she's not um, making herself do something, but she's overcoming the pain. So that's where the willpower comes in. And then instead of the wall, now we're bringing back that it, that wall's leading into an alley. So the adjacent yeah. alley had that behind a restaurant greasy feel. It smelled like piss, body odor, odor and old beer cans. It's good. That's very good. I like that. The euphoria that filled her. Oh, tell me what she feels. <laughs> Don't you have no me. idea how hard it was for me to ignore all these little things. <laughs> but I did. I did it and only dipped. I'm super proud of myself. After being bitten, shortly after me. Right after she was the euphoria that filled her right after she was bitten was gone. Or, or, or I could. Waiting for her killers made everything about her work. Okay. I'm not getting this. Waiting for her killers made everything about her world cold and blissful. What does that mean? I don't know. I didn't know what, what it meant trying to get across initially. <laughs> okay. If she's waiting, that would imply that she's not moving. So that should yeah. be like painful if, if the if the pain recedes when she moves so initially oh gotcha no I'm, I'm okay gotcha gotcha waiting for her killers made everything about her world numb how about numb uh, i think the the euphoric so she got bitten and then it makes her it feel good after she got bitten as long as she right. doesn't move but when then she right. starts yeah, exerting yeah, yeah, energy it starts going away so initially it was as long as she waited for her killers, everything as as about her world still. was cold and blissful. Yeah. yeah. But it was the, as long as she waited for, I'm like, but she's not waiting. <laughs> well, no, but, but that, but that it, it, it qualifies it in a, in a different direction. Yeah. It's if she did what she was supposed to, she got what she, right. She got the good, she got the good stuff. She got the buzz. Yeah. What did it say before, Kenny? Uh, as long as she waited for her killers, everything about her world was cold and blissful. She... As long as she waited. I go back to waited. She waited. For her killers to what? Yeah, that's that's another reason why I just um, as as preemptively just went waiting for her killers. I don't know because I exactly what we're doing here now. Need to go back in and rethink what is the really real meaning behind this area of information. And that's where you can always pop on a comment, let the author know about your confusion, let them yeah. decide. And it, what I what I got coming in for for the line was this is if she doesn't move then it's euphoric, it's right. this mm -hmm. cold sensation, but she's not going to wait for her killers, and this blissful world you know screw that, which is where the next part comes in. But getting there is the tricky part. Wait 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 wait. The reward was cold this, bliss. This silly was, was yeah. I see. I see cold bliss. 
Her reward for docility was icy cold. Yeah, I do like that. Icy cold bliss. She didn't want an ice palace of serenity. She wanted the burning fire of murderous revenge. <laughs> Didn't want. Bye, guy. Have a good mm. one. Bye, guy. Ooh, she had never wanted the nirvana of subservience. Subservience. She wanted the fire. She wanted the murderous fire. No, see, burning fire of murderous revenge is just too many. I, if you just take out burning, she wanted the fire of murderous revenge. I don't like murderous revenge. Really? If it's revenge, it's not murder. You see? Mm. Well, I mean, theoretically speaking. Like the son of a bitch had it coming, it ain't murder. She <laughs> <laughs> uh, wanted the exorcist fire. Violent? <laughs> oh, violent is good. Isn't there something about extreme prejudice? I don't know. Hang on, hang on. Sometimes I do this and I have to like undo everything I did and start over. Oh, don't you love it when you get like three paragraphs down or three pages down and then you're like, oh, well, this doesn't make sense for anything that I did three pages ago and you have to go back. <laughs> That's always fun. Oh, searing. Searing is good. Satisfaction or is that too alliterative? She wanted this scarring, scarring. She wanted the Scary. Searing, satisfied. I mean, oh, I. Searing. Oh, guy, sure. guy earlier said, "Thank you for taking out alliteration." Um, sometimes yeah. I like it. She wanted. Do you want to define what the confession. alliteration was, for for those that don't know? Oh, um, oh, so if you put in searing satisfaction, that repeated SS sound would be alliteration. See. The more you know. She sells seashells by the seashore. And a lot of editors take it out because it can be cheesy or, you know, like a kill your darlings kind of thing. It catches the reader's eye and takes them out of the story. And you're like, oh, well, and that kind of defeats the purpose of having it there in the first place. Um, During the statement, the searing ice. Fulfillment. Yeah. Cause she she wants to to put it to these jerkwads and make them pay. So she wanted the searing fulfillment of violent revenge. So she made herself new. And I added the so she made herself just because it, because um, yeah because you're, you're you're crossing the T there, making sure that but without making everybody feel stupid for not understanding. But I think is it clearer now? Yeah. What does the peanut gallery no. say? What do you what what do you viewers think? Do you like it? Is it working for you? Is it, does it rub your jollies? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got let's see. Desperately, Laura dragged herself toward a wall and willed herself to stand. The adjacent alley had that behind a restaurant greasy feel and smelled like piss, body odor, and old beer cans. The euphoria that filled her right after she was bitten was gone, or more accurately. It receded whenever she moved. Her reward for docility was icy cold bliss. But she had never wanted the nirvana of subservience. She wanted the searing fulfillment of violent revenge. So she made herself move. Yeah. I, I kind of like that. That's, yep. that's singing some tunes that are a lot, a lot stronger, more concise. Okay, pain exploded through her leg. Okay, why? Because she's moving. 
so that's that's the part where I was I knew internally I was I'm gonna have to go back and uh, fix, and I probably shouldn't have done that because that was more line. Um, but the let me find it. Where did it go? Oh yeah, that's good. Just switch those two sentences around. Grinding her teeth, she took three more steps. Yep. Pain exploded through her leg. Yeah, it's good. Boom, fixed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But her, I love this, a herky-jerky ambulation in the right direction. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, like, you could totally see, like, what that is. It's this. Just like, I know, and I hurt yeah. for her. <laughs> like, oh, her leg! That sounds awful when your leg is messed up. Her world was nice. If you want to leave the was out between soul, soul and frozen, you need to do this. Oops. So, so was I ever known warmth. I think warmth is better than heat here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's more enveloping. Well, she couldn't. Well, the words are not whispering. So, so yeah. yeah. Whispers she couldn't understand. She couldn't understand. Echoed. Okay, but if she can't understand it, how does she know it's telling her to stop, surrender to the cold, and embrace the warmth? Okay. So, let's see. Yeah. Whispers echoed harshly in her brain, telling her to stop, surrender to the cold, and embrace the warmth of obedience. Well, unless, because I don't know, are the, is it the monsters yelling at her this stuff? And it's she can't understand because it's their guttural. So there's a few questions in there, but guttural whispers telling her to stop, to surrender the. There we go. Ugh. Hmm. I am not a touch typist. Don't you love it when your fingers don't want to work with you? That's why she's doing something like this. Well, this mostly happens to me when other people are watching me type. I mean, honestly, right. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen normally during the day. But then when someone's looking over my shoulder or like the whole of Internet. Yeah. Hi, Internet. <laughs> Gutterer whispers in her brain told her to stop, surrender to the cold and embrace the warmth of obedience. Screw that. She saw obedience gave her icy cold bliss. Yeah, yeah there we yeah. go. Yeah, the bliss of obedience. Yeah. I dig it. She's okay. If she sobbed, cursed. She didn't sob, cursed. She sobbed, cursed. Makes sense. Yeah. Every muscle in her body cramped, nearly undoing her resolve. Um. I think that's like gilding the lily. That's more than we need. Yeah, bird. We're, we're there with her in the cramping. We're there with her in the. In the fear and the pain, so it's kind of like, um, like they're the beast was looming closer, all this stuff in her head. The beast still loomed closer. Okay, I don't need to know the beast is looming right, closer, it's right, cutting right. the tension. <laughs> oh, my love, the balance it was all she could do to stay upright. Hobbled dash is I know uh, you're, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I hate that. I wrote it so quickly, yeah, don't yeah. hate me. I didn't, I mean, I, 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 li I like what you're trying to paint, the picture that you're trying to paint, but I. But you're, you're painting it with, with crayons instead of acrylics or something. Hobbling. So, and uh, I'll wait till you get through that.
No, we're not feeling it. Um, well, because she's she's upright. She's not yeah. on fours. All she could do to stay upright, breathing shallowly and forcing herself. To... Okay, that needs to stay too. upright and hobble, breathing shallowly and forcing. And continue moving. <laughs> that rhyme. That's yeah. all she could do to stay upright and continue her flight. And keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that part that you deleted was uh -huh. another part as far as wine goes, where I'm just like, it's breathing and what was what was it? Um, Being shallowly and forcing herself to relax. Yeah, like why is she, it's like there's, there's nothing to relax here. She needs to get away yeah. and <laughs> yeah, there's a, no relaxing. Yeah, this is not a good this is not a good time to practice your uh, deep breathing techniques or your shallow breathing techniques. All right, there's no way she could get up again if she fell. Her fingers dragged across chips in the paint as she slid her way forward. <laughs> and gone. <laughs> I mean, that was all just like re it was very repetitive, and her fingers dragged across chips in the paint. I mean, that's. I mean, I get what you're trying to do. You're trying to, you know, paint a picture, but you're you're not painting a picture. You're just like throwing some random details out there that are kind of odd and breaking up the action. We don't want to break up the action. Yeah, so now we're at screw that. She sob cursed with one palm on the wall, and seeing that one palm on the wall that if you really wanted to keep it would have been where I put the paint chips because mm -hmm. it's all together one smooth action um, with one palm on the wall for balance. It was all she could do to stay upright and keep going. No human. I said, stop. The first giant shouted. Oh, nice. Yeah, I liked that one. Yeah. First giant shouted, it lumbered after Lara into the shadows between buildings. Not today, champ. You want some of this, you come and get it. Pain distorted her words as she twisted her neck to look over her shoulder. <laughs> so that just seemed painful all in itself. Like, yeah. But I think he's trying to get like a moment yeah. of her looking back so yeah, that we yeah. can I'm get. Trying, I'm trying to give him a better moment of her looking back. Yeah. As she twisted her neck to look over her shoulder. I mean, don't tell me, show me. So shifting the pain part, not today champ, pain distorted her words. She twisted to locate her. Yeah, that needs some work. Still better than it was. Stop that. Thank you. See, not today, champ. Pain distorted her words when she twisted to locate her pers pursuer? Yes. Locate her pursuer. You want some of this, you come and get it. And now her neck's not breaking. And Because I like this next part. Silhouetted by the mouth of the alleyway. Not by. You got to be in the mouth or you can't be silhouetted. Silhouetted in the mouth of the alleyway. What's wrong with alley? I don't know. 
I mean, it's one of those things, it's like before and within and it's like, why, why can't it just be an alley? Why does it have to be within the alley? I mean, what, within the alleyway, why do you have to make it grandiose? Let's just have some action. Just give me the word. Tell me where we're going. You don't have to tell me, you know, in the Ford Fiesta that was teal blue, you know, you just tell me in the car. <laughs> right, so silhouetted in the mouth of the alley, one of the armored giants pulled a pack from his back and opened it. Just do an armor giant pulled, or one armor giant, or one giant alien, or some. An armored giant pulled yeah. a pack from his back and opened it. Yeah, often when there's those. Uh, prepositional phrases with of, you can delete it or replace it some way. It's usually just extra fluffy words we don't need. He took the pack on his back. Yeah, she didn't see what happened next. She... Hate figure too. It's very generic. I mean, at this point, we know they're aliens. We know they're giants. We know they're armored. So, in blue, I think. Oh, okay, what do we think? Let's see. Silhouetted in the mouth of the alley, an armored giant reached for the pack on his back. She couldn't see what happened next, but didn't like what her gut was telling her. The shadow had the manner of a canine handler about to release a dog. I like that, yeah. That's what about smoother. she couldn't see what was happening, but didn't like what her gut was telling her. Because so the she, observation she's... is happening while the action's happening I in the past. <laughs> so on on this one, because it like her not knowing but knowing, um, it is would be because it's chapter five, and we know it's there's some kind of aliens. They're in armor. She knows what flying cyborg. Uh, drones are and it's it's a pretty um pulling something off of his back like that she it's going to be like oh crap kind of like someone's reaching in their pocket oh no it's going to be a gun we don't know it's a gun but we know that motion is going for a gun so like that action that she sees is oh crap cyborg canines so that's what i get from from that yeah. part yeah okay um okay Don't tell us. You just already told us that. She had time to think, and maybe she understood this subconsciously. She would have thought of a drone operator unpacking a remote-controlled flying machine. Just ex yeah, exactly what we just went through. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, and it opened with her hating speaking before she spoke, so it was a little awkward. Keyed her portable radio mic and shouted for help, hating the fear in her voice. Yeah, so make it more specific. I just think that it works better for me. Okay, Armin Dangerous. That was when she reached the dead end and then described the dead end from an even higher brick wall. All right, so this is where I'd be checking Miriam for yeah. dead end chain link, and also uh, Chicago manual style for hyphenation. The well, end yeah, um, dead end is a is a noun here, so it's not. Mm. Chain link is an adjective, so it is. That's the quick and dirty thumb rule. That was when she reached it. It. Ten foot tall chain link like fence. 
about a foot away from an even higher brick wall. Okay, that's kind of clunky, but we can, we'll leave it. Don't tell me what she thinks. <laughs> yeah. Maybe on a good day, she could have parkoured parkour parkour her way up it maybe grab the button and see in this and this is that part of a boarded up window is it boarded or is it not does she have access or not so here's the thing the window ledge isn't boarded up the window is boarded up yeah maybe grab the bottom of and there's here we come back to the here's the you have not defined the window so how is it the window it's got to be a window hmm Grab the bottom of a boarded up window. Mm. How about that? I mean, don't have to look up window ledge either. <laughs> <laughs> Clever. I would, yeah, I'm going to double check that chain link. I think 10 foot tall as an adjective. Siphonated. Yeah. I think, I think. That's actually when you get to the copy part. Yes. Yep. So, so we, we, bled from a... line, we bled from line into copy, but that's, this, yeah, this little, the Merriam Webster part, that's looking it up and that's, that's what a copy edit does. That is copy. Yep. So much time <laughs> digging <laughs> through. Okay, don't tell me then. I, I know that things happen in sequence. So she put her back against the chain link and. Yeah, then I don't, I, I yeah. Then slowly. <laughs> Suddenly, immediately. Yeah. Okay. How about, let's do this. Yep. She put her back to the chain link and checked the magazine in her nine millimeter. Boom. <laughs> Two rounds left. Yeah, you gotta get your exposition in the right place. Rounds had to hit some part of her attacker that dropped him instantly. No. Rounds had to drop him instantly. <laughs> yeah, he's needed to count. She had to drop him instantly. Plushy cyborgs trailing ominous tendrils. You don't. Have, you have to say behind them. You just said trailing. Mm -hmm. I think that arc. As they arced forward, swept into the alley. Okay, you can have one, but you can't have the other. As they swept into the alley. Thank you, because I hate forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. I have one manuscript that. Oh, what is it? Um lurched forward leapt forward you could probably do a comma after tendrils three ring wing creatures fleshy cyborgs trailing ominous tendrils swept into the alley yes Eel. and Get then the as is gone because <laughs> <laughs> i oh that as another as slapping it dust. silly <laughs> and but Okay. Three, three small, winged creatures. I, I, I'm not. I'm okay. Are they small flying things? Because why? Then why are their tendrils ominous? I can see the the cyborgs being ominous. I can see the cyborgs being ominous, but I don't know why the tendrils would be ominous, especially if the small the that's the flying things are small. Should, the small should go here. I don't think he means ominous as much as he means like threatening. Thank like you. we're three winged we're creatures or gross or something but i think the tendrils can like onto her can like latch yeah and so she gets a sense about them that they're like right 
Well, because because they are when she finally does get into the room, you know, they latch onto her. I, like the, I her. like the ominous tendrils, but so I would not put. I would put the small elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Three small winged creatures, fleshy mm -hmm. shyborgs, trailing ominous tendrils. So now we instantly know the size. It's boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so she aimed at the man launching them and fired twice. Giant staggered. Okay. So in that one, others. I don't. I have no idea if it's if it's more small things flying or if it's uh, more giant armored alien dudes. What? And how does that connect to the rest of other what and to where? Okay, let's we're just we're gonna ignore that. Delete that. Be considered. And I wouldn't holster it. I'd be hitting people with it, Scott. So <laughs> there. It's the only thing she has left. Yeah. Solid metal object, yeah. Okay, here we go, that's what I want. I'm going to insert an adverb. I feel like Briefly I looked up hand-to-hand -hand recently. This is half my job, I've is seen it, like, checking Merriam-Webster. Yeah, stuff. exactly what Ellen's doing. I always see it with the little dashes. Hand dash to head dash hand. <laughs> Okay, well, no, I don't think it's lame as a desperate measure. I think it's lame as a survival measure. As desperate measures went, it was lame. No, it was a very good desperate measure. She Did briefly considered hand? fighting hand to hand. As desperate measures went. I think maybe it's trying to reference. Yeah. Like, these are gigantically armored alien dudes and... She's a small cop lady. <laughs> so fighting hand to hand would be pointless. As far as survival went. Survival tactics, <laughs> strategies. It was desperate. Lame and desperate, desperate and lame. Oh. Then Miriam says hand to hand, typhonated as an adjective and open as a adverb. So we've got, she briefly considered fighting hand to hand. As far as survival tactics went, it was lame. The fence and the window were a better option. Yeah. Reaching safety in that direction seemed as likely as flying to the moon, but failing to take action was unacceptable. Should there be a comma there after or before the but? Or just. Yeah. Come before the but, yeah. Yeah, but failing, failing to, act, to act was good. Was unacceptable. Yeah. It's her only choice. Yeah, the chain link is starting to bother me too, Lauren. I'll look it up. I think it goes both ways, actually. Stabbed the toes of her boots. Okay, this is way too much description of chain link because we all know, know what, what it, it looks like. like. Chain link fence, chain link is hyphenated. She dug her fingers um, into the chain link and stabbed the toes of her boots. Into the gaps. Up and up she went. 
So I don't I know. Would, I would change that because on, up and up means honest. Like, is he on the up and up? Is he? Oh, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you just do up, she went. Yeah. So I don't, I don't like that at all either. Okay. The alien shouted, the alien shouted strange words that hurt her ears and made her bones cold. A waffling non sound. I don't know if he means waffling. Does he mean? It, well, to me, that's almost like. I know what he thinks he means, I think, but. Is it describing a different sound or is it the same shouting sound? That's a good. This question. is another sound. That's because that's that's one. my question with this one is, okay, you know, the alien shouted strange words. Is that the waffling that's battering her ears? Because if so, we've already been told it needs to be deleted. I think it's this next line. It was like driving with one window rolled down, annoying but nowhere near disabling. So it's like that, like foom, foom, yeah, that, foom. Foom. yeah, that vibrate vibration. Okay. But it's not waffling. It's like a vibrating um, pressure. Yeah. It's more like a pressure that mm. yeah. that like oscillating, dopplering. Muted. Pump, pump, pump. Yeah. <laughs> I would almost just want to like do like an italic sound. <laughs> a flump, flump. Yeah. Added her yeah, ears. I see that. Yeah. An, an inner vibration battered your ears and because I know exactly yeah I know we know exactly what it is that's being described but that's one of those tricky things is how do you how do you describe it in a concise way hmm. that doesn't take away from everything around it un but enhances un undulate undulation undulating thank you undulating pressure uh vibration Tension. Um, yeah. Okay. I think we've been off a lot. <laughs> yeah, we're like half hour over. We're like almost <laughs> to the end. Yeah. But um, yeah. So for like for the most part, a lot of just clarification and taking out a lot of the repeats of information and like you know unnecessary yeah, description. So. Making saying what you're trying, helping you say what you're trying to say instead of. What you said. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you if you wrote a grocery list, you know, or or like micro stage directed everything, or you spent like five months on this one chapter and you rewrote it over and over and over again, you're gonna find out in the long run that you probably did way too much and you repeated yourself endlessly and moved things around. And I don't know where I'm going with this. What were we saying? Well, it's well, it. There you go, Lauren. You can yeah, also Lauren. see how much time this takes. You, you can see how much time this takes as editors, you know, editing, editing this book. Um, and in the past, they would have teams of editors on a book to get it to get it all ready. You know, go through the developmental edit, go through a line edit, go through a copy edit, and then a proofread. Um, but now publishers, they've got a wealth of options of other manuscripts that are out there, and they want a manuscript that already has this all done. They've got people because who to pay for their own edits. So. They have the pick of the lot, yeah. right? So they, they expect a lot of this to be done already. Um, and uh, yeah, that's what we're here for. <laughs> <laughs> we, we enjoy being collaborators. And we know that there's a lot of editors out there who do it, a very excellent job out there. This is the kind of thing they do. Um, they might they do it differently. They do. They have their strong strengths as well. And um, to the editors out there or the folks who are hoping to become an editor, you know, we're excited for you. We're happy for you. And we hope that uh, this episode can give you some ideas of what you can do and how you can help be a collaborator to another author out there. Absolutely. Yeah, and well, you'll develop, your own, you'll develop your own style and your own methods and your own way of working. And mm -hmm. 
And if you like the way that we work, you can find us at nosafewordsllc.com. You can hire all three of us. You can hire one of us. You know, if you're not sure what sort of editing that you do need, we also do manuscript evaluations so that we can, you know, take a peek at it and and give you that's like, hey, it would you don't really need a whole developmental, just really a line in a copy or, hey, this really needs to be taken down, you know, get to the bones of it, needs some reworking. And we can help you through that. You can get a story consult. You can get yep. your uh, blurb written for the back of your book. Some of us are very good at that. Lots of stuff. We've got it at your no safe words LLC.com. Alrighty, for Lauren Moore, Ellen the Cutter Campbell, I am Kayleen Williams. Thank you, everyone in the live chat who has stuck with us, who watched, and for all those that enjoy these live edits, we love giving them to you because at the end of the day, stronger writing makes stronger editing. And then we don't have to spend an hour trying to figure out the as and the breathing and the looking. And the walking and the watching. And the standing. <laughs> standing and the turning. All right. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. And we will see you next time for more reading, writing, and everything in between right here on Keystroke Mediums, The Writer's Journey. Peace out, you guys.